everyone. Greetings for the day. I'm Sayuka from Beautiful Spotless Skin Team and I'm sure all of you must be keeping good health. To look beautiful and smart at all times is quest of humans right from the beginning of civilization. Few of the very common conditions affecting our look and feel is acne, hypo or hyperpigmentation and even hair loss. Out of these, acne is a big concern. Acne is a common skin condition that can impact anyone. Whether you are a teenager or an adult, this skin complaint is no stranger. Knowing the various types of acne can actually help you to treat the condition better. Acne is a chronic condition affecting more than 85% of adolescents and young adults. It is one of the most common diseases affecting humanity and quality of life. It goes beyond just being a skin ailment to various psychological disorders such as depression, anxiety, stress, low esteem. Hence, it is important to know about the holistic treatment approach for the same men. So let's connect today with our skin expert, Dr. Akshita Anand, live from Ghaziabad, to talk on acne care. Dr. Akshita Anand is a con committed dermatologist and an aesthetic physician with a great clinical acumen and diagnostic skills. She completed her MBBS and post graduation. So she has done her... MD from Swami Vivekanand Subhati University and have also attained a fellowship in aesthetic medicine. She is also an accredited member of the IADVL, Indian Association of Dermatology, Mineralogy and Leprosy. She has years of accomplished experience in managing various skin disorders, acne, pigment trees, skin disorders, hair loss, facial aesthetic, enhancing procedures using the most advanced technology. Thank you so very much, doctor, for joining us. It's such a pleasure to have you with us for this very session. A very warm welcome to you. Thank you. So, doctor, today, as we are going to talk about acne, first of all, what is acne? Uh, what are the various, you know, kinds of acne, types of acne lesions? So acne is actually a chronic inflammatory disease of sebaceous gland. Mm -hmm. So it's an inflammatory um, disease which happens uh, mostly on face, but can also affect back and buttocks as well. Uh, so it's a very, you can say, a disfiguring sort of a disease for people who have it because it can uh, psychologically impact the person. And uh, so there are various types of acne. It can be, it can range from basic blackhead and whitehead to up till inflammatory papules and uh, uh, they can be pustules as well which is like a pus uh, pus filled pimple as we call it so even that uh, is included in acne even uh, you can see nodular acne or that inflammatory red big cystic acne is also a part of the disease. so they can be actually it can range from basic blackhead to the inflammatory pustular ones Right. Now, those who go through this phase of, you know, having acne, etc., keep wondering why are they having these acne? So, doctor, what would be the probable cause of acne? So, the basic cause uh, because of which acne happens, it when uh, the sebaceous duct is blocked due to any, uh, you know, the oil production, it's when the duct is blocked, there is a formation of a comedon or a blackhead and a whitehead which can later progress up to form a papule or a pustule. So there could be many causative agents. One, obviously due to hormonal shifts in the teenage can cause acne. Secondly, if a person has a lot of uh, oily skin, you know, a lot of oil secretion, then they are more prone for acne. Thirdly, even any sort of a bacterial infection on the face, especially the bee acne can cause acne. Then uh, application of some agents which are not non comedogenic they can clog the pore and acne can happen. So all these can can lead to acne. So a lot of reasons are there, you know, uh, which can lead to acne. Now the thing is, uh, we see, uh, you know, patterns when it comes to acne. Many a times we see acne in the butterfly area covering the nose and the uh, cheeks or in the forehead or in the uh, acne along the jaw side. Does uh, they signify something? I mean, uh, do they tell us, you know, what could be the probable cause? So, yes, mostly it happens that way. This is known as acne mapping, as we call it. So, if there is acne covering the forehead, the most, most public call, cause is the patient is applying oil. And because of that, they are having forehead acne. 
so uh, application of oil can lead to acne second could be any application of thick gels or cream or styling wax that can cause acne or a pomade acne third is even if a person has a lot of dandruff they can develop fungal acne as well uh, so this can be for the forehead if a person and in especially in adult onset acne you can see acne along the jawline so most probably the cause is hormonal due to some hormonal imbalances those acne is coming it's like in patients of pcod so they have acne over the jawline so it's more related to hormonal disturbances and the one on the face they can be a teenage acne or you know anything uh, as the word came recently in covid times the mask acne because the occlusion was there after wearing you know a regular mask they developed acne along the mask area so this is how uh, we get an idea that what can be the cause right and initially, doctor, you said that there are n number of things responsible for acne, and uh, uh, of course, uh, it's important to know the root cause, right? That why acne is happening to uh, said individual. Now, my question is: whenever acne happens, normally, you know, uh, rather than going to the doctor, we normally go inside the kitchen and search for some home remedies, or go to uh, the chemist shop for any, you know, quick fix. We ask the chemist to give us something or uh, these days influencers are so many and uh, we keep on following them and ha they have um, a remedy for almost every ailment so rather than going to the right person which is a qualified dermatologist we go for home remedies or over-the-counter medication on influencers etc etc what's your take on them is it okay or um, uh, do they lead to, you know, um, uh, making the ultimate treatment lengthy or other complexities, et cetera, et cetera? So actually, uh, it's it's not okay at all. It should be discouraged by everyone because you can lead to another complications and pigmentary issues later. In order to treat that, you will get many other complications, which will be difficult for a dermatologist then to treat it. It's okay. always easy to treat acne than to treat its complication of scarring and pigmentation. So one is that. And secondly, uh, it's never like a one size fits all. So uh, every acne is also different. So that uh, is for us to judge how the patient's skin is overall and what's the to what will be the tolerance for that person to start the treatment. Mm -hmm. So and it's it should be considered as any other systemic ailment. And should not be like uh, you can use any face wash or any moisturizer, put toothpaste there and, you know, it'll go. Nothing of that sort happens in real. So it should be considered as a disease for which treatment is recommended. Right. Now, when a person comes to you uh, with acne, uh, how do you diagnose that? What could be the cause? I mean, are there tests or what kind of tests, etc. cetera, you normally advise them? So sometimes tests are required, but not for the diagnosis of the uh, acne, but okay. for how the treatment should be followed. Okay. Like, uh, as I told you, in some patients, we uh, have this thing, it could be PCOH, it could be hormonal imbalances. So for that, we need some tests. Or sometimes we need some, we have to start some medications and we have to get the baseline blood levels done for that. So those investigations would help us in the treatment protocol, but not for the uh, Diagnosis. Diagnose, diagnosis is mostly clinical. Okay. And what are the treatment options available? So there are many treatment options for that, starting from basic skincare to oral medications and topical medication. A medical grade treatment is recommended. Uh, and it depends on the age of the patient, the site of the patient, the extent of acne. It depends on all of that. Secondly, there are multiple procedures which can help you fasten the results of acne, like chemical peel. And uh, even if there are blackheads or whiteheads, as people call it, they are comedones. So we can manually extract that as well, which will improve the course of treatment. Then some, sometimes you have to give interlesional injections also if the inflammation is too, uh, too, uh, to curb the inflammation. And there are many uh, treatment options available these days for acne. But obviously, acne uh, patients, we need one thing is patience because it will take time. Right. So it will take time, but eventually you'll get relief. So for that, you need to go to the right person at the right time. So whenever uh, you see or spot, you know, acne formation, 
please go and consult a qualified dermatologist. Uh, so we have treatment options available, various procedures are there, but then you need to go to the right person to get them, you know, taken care of, which is a qualified dermat. Now, Dr. Ravi, um, know that it's important to take care of our skin, you know, but with the amount of, um, the kind of lifestyle we are into, the amount of stress, it becomes very difficult to uh, give or a lot a good amount of time for your skin care. What are the basics that we can go for and which also go uh, and play an important role in, uh, you know, um, keeping our skin acne free? Uh, so the first thing would be uh, maintaining a basic routine for your skin that is cleansing, moisturizing and using the sunscreen. Even it, it helps in preventing the further acne as well. So you should use a cleanser which suits your skin type and according to the weather, obviously. The second would be uh, the moisturizing effect because even uh, oily acne prone skin needs hydration. It should not be oily, but it should be hydrated. So even oily and acne prone skin needs some moisturizer and it should be acne specific, which will not clog the pores. And the third would be a sunscreen because uh, whenever your skin barrier is damaged, as in case of acne, there are always chances of pigmentation developing or scar developing. So sunscreen would prevent that. So sunscreen is also a very important part of your uh, acne routine. Many times, yeah. Please continue. And if you go for some other, these are like your skincare routine, but other things which will help will be your diet uh, in, in this case and hygiene as well. Mm -hmm. And as you were talking about the diet, you know, modification, we have a viewer with us, Feroz Khan, who has just typed in his um, query, which is, are there dietary changes that may help improve my acne? So let's talk about the, uh, you know, diet, what we are taking inside our body, what we are eating, what we are drinking. So, you know, what can we include? What should we avoid to have uh, acne free? So there are basically two things which should be avoided. That is, one is dairy and second is sugar intake. Sugar intake not only includes sugar, it includes jaggery as well, honey as well. Because they have high glycemic index food. So any food which is sugary in nature apart from the natural fruits should be avoided. And uh, second is dairy. You can include yogurt, you can include lassi, but you should avoid whole milk, butter, cheese. This will aggravate your acne. And if uh, because these uh, these days many sorry many people go ahead with uh, isolate whey protein so that also aggravates acne so that should a person should actually shift to a plant based protein. Okay, now as we are talking about acne and how to take good care of our skin and maintain a routine skin care routine so that uh, you know uh, we can stay or our skin can stay healthy. So, uh, doctor, many times what happens, especially those who have acne prone skin or with those who have oily skin, they'll keep on you know washing their face again and again, fearing that if we don't uh, wash our face, uh, you know, every now and then we'll have a unhealthy or you know dirty face and that will aggravate acne what's the logic behind it is, is the correct thing to do no actually it's not a correct thing to do because excessive washing of a uh, face will lead to a uh, dry skin and it will give you a uh, your body a feeling that there is no oil so it will compensate produce more oil on your face leading to acne mm -hmm. so you should only restrict yourself to washing your face twice a day that's it you should not wash it again and again. Otherwise, it will become more dry and your body will pr produce more oil. Right. So that should be avoided. Okay. Now, while discussing uh, the uh, you know moisturization part, you said that it's important for us to moisturize our skin regularly. But again, with people who have oily skin, they'll you know, say, and many times they, they don't include moisturizer as a routine thing. They'll say that I already have so much of oil. Do I really need moisturizer? So do we have separate moisturizers for people with oily skin or people with acne prone skin? What should we go for? Yes, there are definitely these days uh, just moisturizers, they are built for every skin type. So you should go ahead with a moisturizer for oily skin type, which is non-comedogenic, which is ideally gel-based or lotion-based. It should not be a thick cream, otherwise you will feel greasy. And there are many oil-free moisturizers available in market. Mm -hmm. But if someone is suffering from acne, they should go for a medicated one. Okay, and again, you can go and ask your dermat 
to suggest you the right moisturizer and the cleanser, sunscreen, etc. Now, talking about sunscreens, people have n number of complaints or excuses for not using sunscreen on a regular basis. They'll say that, you know, it makes my skin oily or uh, I start sweating after using sunscreen or I don't like the dull look I get after, you know, applying sunscreen or I already have so many acne, I don't want to layer it up with sunscreen. So the fact remains that in India, still 67% of the population are not using sunscreen as a regular thing. But as you said, sunscreen application is really important, even if uh, you have acne. How to choose the right sunscreen? So uh, when it comes to acne patients, you should go for a gel-based or a lotion-based sunscreen. It should be matte in texture so that it doesn't give you that oily shine over your face. And you, any sunscreen you use, you should you have to use repeat, reapply it every three to four hourly. That's a necessity. And mm -hmm. also, uh, it you just have to check that it's non-comedogenic so that it does not increase your acne. Mm -hmm. So one thing is that we definitely need to, you know, include uh, sunscreen in our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, skincare regime. Uh, it will keep uh, skin healthy and, of course, um, other things. But uh, do we also include sunscreen as a, uh, you know, treatment part of uh, treating acne? Because, uh, you know, we get procedures done for our acne or acne scars, et cetera. And we, um, our skin becomes very sensitive. And again, doctor normally advises sunscreen. So uh, does sunscreen falls in every part in the, I mean, uh, just routine care of your skin or if your skin is sensitive or if you are getting any procedures done, sunscreen fits everywhere, right? Definitely, it's true. Because whenever we do any kind of a procedure, even if we are putting anti-acne medications, mm -hmm. uh, our barrier will be compromised because we need that keratolytic effect, which mm -hmm. will help you with your acne. So uh, whenever, whenever your skin is becoming sensitive to mm -hmm. the outer atmosphere, you need to layer up a sunscreen to protect it from any damage from UV rays. So mm -hmm. that is recommended. And especially in our generation of screen time, it's a uh, one and only... Uh, skincare ingredient which can help you do wonders. Oh, so if you're working in front of your laptop or screens, or mobiles, etc., or even sitting inside your house, you have these LED lights, etc., and the radiations are equally damaging for our skin. So sunscreen is the way out, whether you are in or out of your house, offices, etc. We have one more question from our viewer. Her question is, Ki, kya acne par makeup karna chahiye? So, uh, acne pe up makeup ideally kabhi kabhi karna chahi, isme koi problem nahi hai. But uh, jab bhi, uh, you should never sleep on with makeup. So, whenever you do makeup, you have to double cleanse your face. That will help you get out all that, you know, makeup uh, residue from your face. Secondly, your brushes uh, or your applicators should be clean. You have to start with a fresh clean brush and fresh clean hands when you start with your makeup. That is necessary. And your makeup product should be uh, of good quality. It shouldn't be expired one. And secondly, it should be, uh, it, they're, they're always mentioned on the uh, your bottle or foundation or whatever you're using. That's hypoallergenic. That should be recommended. Right. We have Shania seen with us. Should I look for specific ingredients in the products I'm buying? Especially if one is acne prone. Uh, see, if you're acne prone, there are a list of ingredients, but not every ingredient would suit everyone. So mm -hmm. it depends, uh, like, in what season you're finding that because the things would be different for summers and different for winters. And secondly, what grade of acne you have. If you just oily skin but no acne, the treatment would be different. But if you have uh, ongoing present inflammatory acne, the treatment would be different. So again, as I told, there is no one-size-fits-all criteria which goes in acne. Right. Now, uh, many a times, you know, acne appears just before a very big event or something. And um, we keep on wondering what to do. And that's when we fall for quackeries or fall for over-the-counter, you know, quick fixes. And uh, it's like a trap. But then what should logically be do? What is the right way?
that will also take time that will not go overnight so nothing is going to you know uh, uh, quick fix will again take time so yeah i think before any important event you can restrict your sugar and your dairy that will help you in preventing that all right and uh, uh, doctor you know what happens once we are you know done with the acne we many a times are left with the acne scars and when we go for the treatment of acne scars we uh, realizes that treating acne was much easier than treating the acne scar how to prevent you know having these scars and in case we have them what to do so uh, prevention is always better because it's easily treatable so if you have acne go and seek treatment for it because the longer you will keep that acne over your face the, there are more chances of getting that scarring and pigmentation mm-hmm. secondly don't pick on your acne that will prevent scarring thirdly don't apply any basin or any loofah scrub over your face it will spoil your face and if you have acne scar then only medications can't help you with scarring only procedures like co2 laser or uh, micro needling or uh, mnr only these procedures can help you with that okay so for that uh, you definitely need to go and consult a good doctor so that they can you know suggest and get the procedures done as well again for the procedures there are parlors quacks etc who you know have claims that they can do the procedures but why it is uh, suggested or advisable to go and get it done through a qualified dermat doctor so uh, if the question is you getting a heart attack you will not go to some random person to get angiography done right so it's a medical right. procedure it should be only done by a medical trained person Mm-hmm. and whatever lasers uh, are used they are fda approved the medical equipments they shouldn't be used by any random person and uh, this is invasive this is minimally invasive you're talking about mm-hmm. you will have pain while we doing it so we numb your face and you know there will be erythematous invasive so it's not a random parlor facial which you know one can go to any person and get it done but definitely right. i think uh, uh, awareness is less in this case in general population so yeah it should be definitely discouraged i would say right any maintenance therapy uh, once we are done with the acne because you think uh, you said that you know acne is not that once it's gone it will be gone yeah. forever it definitely have chances to come back so any maintenance therapy anything that we need to you know yeah, definitely see as i told you about diet that is one thing a person can take care of it because they'll get to know about their triggers as well secondly the, uh, you should use a, again your cleanser your moisturizer and your sunscreen should be according to the weather and your skin type that you should continue using it don't consider it as a medication mm-hmm. you have to uh, continue using it for the more and then there are things you should oil, avoid oil, avoid oiling your scalp that can aggravate acne you should change your pillow covers every alternate night so that uh, that source of infection is removed you should clean your phone that you put on your face So these are some steps you have to take to actually prevent acne further. Right. So hygiene also goes a long way in preventing you from having acne. And doctor, before we sum up the whole session, any take home message, any do's or don'ts you would like to emphasize in the end? So my take home message would be acne is also a medical condition which you should seek treatment for. And if you take treatment early, it will. actually help you in preventing scarring and pigmentation later and you can actually have a spotless skin and if you delay in initial years and you set in with the deeper scarring in your face that will going to take some time some procedures some amount of um, you know uh, patience along the way it can go up till one year also for the procedures to get over so treat early and from a correct place Right, it's really important. Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Akshita, for your valuable time and this very informative session. Thank you so very much. It was wonderful hearing you. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, viewers, for your active participation in today's session. Stay connected to our beautiful, spotless skin base. Stay happy. Stay healthy. Have a great day ahead. Goodbye.